Hello, welcome back. I know in my previous video I had talked about actually starting with the berm over there and running it towards the house, but after thinking about it and getting this assembled, I decided that the best course of action in order to start to level this out would be to start with this back berm. So I assembled this box that will go back here so that I can get an idea of how high up I'm going to have to go. Um, I ran a string line and it's actually 18 inches and then 20 inches the difference just in that line from this two foot distance. So I'm going to bring the camera over here and kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, so this will give you a better view. We have our string line, which is level at the moment. Um, you can clearly see this that this box is going down, so it's going down the slope. And if we look over here, we can see that berm, which is about as high as probably being level. But again, I don't want to be level. I want to be about, I want to be, I want it to go, the grade to go down about an inch. So I'm not going to go as high as that berm. So what the first thing I need to do in order to get started is along the fence line here are sprinklers for the grass. So I need to start digging up that irrigation first. And then what I'm going to do with that irrigation is actually run it into these boxes, put a pressure regulator on it, and then this will all be fully automated. So let me get to work here start digging out some of this sod and the sprinklers. Okay, so I got a little bit of the uh, sod pulled back here. And the reason why I pulled the sod back is I needed to figure out where this sprinkler line was running from. So I'm going to utilize this line. So basically what I'm going to do is pull it back, abandon it over on that side, and then reuse it. Um, by the way, if you guys are into gardening and you don't have a, it's called a hori hori. This is a Japanese uh, digging knife. Basically, hori hori loosely translated as dig dig. This thing is one of the most useful tools I have. You can use it for digging. It has a serrated edge here for chopping. And then this is also kind of like a knife. It's not super sharp, but you can chop a uh, branch with it. It's a really good product. I'll put a link to it. Um, it's one of my most useful tools that I have right now. So anyways, what I'm going to do is keep going back, tracing this line back, because what I want to do is basically abandon it right about in here for the moment. And then what I'm going to do is run lines off of it back to this tree. These trees will need to be moved. They're actually too far back, so I'll have to move them forward. Plus, they have to come out of the ground anyways because of the new grading. Now, I know some of you out there are probably screaming, just cover the sod. I've done this quite a few times, and the one time I didn't cover the sod, it was a nightmare. I mean, the one time I did cover the sod, it was a nightmare. It doesn't die. If you don't take your sod out, it will grow back. It'll send out the little crab grass everywhere. So my advice would always be to remove the sod. I don't care if you cover it with cardboard, with plastic, with dirt, this stuff will find its way back. So that's why I always remove my sod and would always advise everybody else to remove the sod when you're doing this type of work. All right, so I got this line dug out. You can see it comes down here and the line runs here. I was hoping that it ran that way. Um, what this is is the main irrigation pipe and then this is called a swing pipe. So what it does is it punctures this main line right here and then that's how the sprinkler works from the main line with this swing line, or with the swing pipe. I actually don't really like this type because it actually leaks. Um, if you actually, if you ran, if you <clears throat> if you've ever ran one of these lines um, with it exposed, there is a little bit of a drip, and I, I just don't like that. So what I'm going to do, this actually ended up working out perfectly because I can just cut the line right where that is, and then I can run another pipe up. It'll come up here, and then that'll be for my uh, irrigation for my boxes along here. And I can also tap into it for the other stuff over there. I will have other lines in the middle of the lawn that I'll use. But for now, I can get these boxes set up so I can start burying everything back here. So let me go ahead and fix that and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, now that I have the swing pipe removed, I can kind of show you how this works. 
So this is, I believe it's called a saddle, this part right here. And what it does is it straps around this pipe and then you tighten this down, which then makes this barb come out. And this barb, it's, it's got a little bit of a sharp tip. And what happens is, see if I can get it here. It makes a hole in this irrigation line, the main line right here. And that's how the sprinkler is set up with this type. So it actually works out pretty good for me because now I can cut that hole out and put this T in, which I'll utilize for my, my irrigation. Okay, so I put a T in. I haven't tightened anything down yet. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how I'm actually going to get this to connect. So what I did was, this is where the, the saddle went in. What I did was I cut on one side so the hole's still right there. And then I put this piece in, this T. And the reason why you dig back a little bit further is so you have room to manipulate this, this pipe right here. Because what I have to do now is cut this and then pull all this up and then shove it in together. And then I'll go ahead and strap it down afterwards with these fittings right here. So Okay, so that's it. We removed this saddle and we replaced it with this T. I would always use this type of fitting. I don't think I would ever use this type right here. Anyways, we got the new fitting in here. We put in a T, just removed this piece, replaced it with the T. And now let me back up and kind of show you why I'm doing it this way. If you look here, here's where our beds will be. And this is the line that we're going to use for it. So now that I have that sprinkler abandoned, I can go ahead and start backfilling now. All right, so that was the hole that I was actually working in. So now what I'm going to do is backfill it, get this ir irrigation line set here, and then we'll be able to tap off of this and go straight into all of these boxes right here, go into the tree. Um, and if we need to, we can go into the other boxes that'll go there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this backfilled. By the way, if uh, you guys have any questions on anything that I'm doing, um, feel free to ask. I actually, when I was 16 years old, I actually worked for a landscaping company. At the time, I think I made $10 an hour. I thought it was completely unfair that I'm digging trenches and putting sod in and doing sprinkler systems. And then I realized, I, I worked there for about a year. I, I loved my boss. I thought I was a little bit underpaid. But now that I'm older, I realized that that was one of the most valuable lessons I, I could have gotten because now I can do this stuff by myself. I, I was trained by him. Um, I actually feel like I owe him at this point. So if you guys have any questions on irrigation, just feel free to ask. So you'll notice I brought in the sod cutter. Um, after doing this little section, I realized in order to do this whole section, that I'd probably have to bring have to bring in some equipment. So I got that in. Now I can start to get this sod rolled up. All right. Let's do a little walk and talk. I just got all of this cut with the uh, sod cutter. Um, it was the first time I ever used a sod cutter. And the reason why I decided to go get one is I did that little square right there and it took me about two hours and i happened to be listening to a podcast yesterday and the guy was talking about removing a lawn and said if you don't use a sod cutter you're just making your job a lot more difficult so home depot they're a hundred dollars that machine is a hundred dollars for four hours and it took me i have to return it at one o'clock so about two hours to do all of this and um, for a hundred dollars. So I think that it's important to point out when you learn something new. So if you guys are thinking about removing a lawn, make sure that you uh, get yourself a sod cutter. And then these are all in nice rolls now. I can throw them in the back of my trailer.
Okay, so that's it for a little bit over one day. Got the solder removed. I'll get this stuff cleaned up. A little bit more stuff over there I need to clean up. Um, but just wanted to do a little recap. So we got the solder removed. Um, moved part of the irrigation. So we know where that's at. There's going to be some more in here that I'm going to track down for all the boxes. Um, and as far as for the next video, we will start to work this edge right here for the, the new berm coming off of there. And then we will backfill some berms along there and start to get this leveled off. And uh, my original plan was to do it in sections to try and keep my dog off of the muddy area while I'm working on this, but uh, I just, it's just too much work to try and do it in sections. So I'm just going full bore for this section right here. Um, I bought this temporary fencing to keep her out so I can put that in along here. And then I can actually use that for landscaping cloth too. So it won't go to waste. I'll actually use it as a dual purpose fence and landscaping cloth. So that's it for this video. Um, hope you tune in for the next one as we start to move on and things will start to come together. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you again for watching.